All right, so for today we have our prayer service. And so it's been, as I mentioned before, it's been shortened a little bit. We're still going to look at the lectionary text from Exodus. And we will also um, yeah, come, be coming together in song. And I hope that we spend more time um, in prayer, hoping to spend more time in prayer today. Okay. So those of you who are not able to catch this morning's worship service, um, I hope that this is a uh, nourishing time for you. Some of us were able to join, so we're able to kind of see and experience that worship service and be in community here in this space as well. It's nice to be able to do both. And um, all right, so we'll start with our opening prayer with this prayer. Gracious and loving God, we lift up prayers of thanks for gathering us here into this space to worship you, to commune with you through prayer, and through to be in faith community with one another. God, we lift up prayers that during this time of worship, our hearts, our minds, our spirits are open to receiving you in new ways and in ways that are different, in ways that refresh us, in ways that rejuvenate us. God, we lift up prayers of thanks for the privilege of being here with one another as we share in each other's ups and downs in life, as we share in one another's insights and experiences in how we uh, relate to you, God, and how we relate to others in our community and to the world. God, we lift up prayers that you help us to remove any obstacles that keep us from being closer to you and that keep us from being able to open ourselves up and um, God, we also lift up prayers that you uh, give to us your message today of healing, your message of comfort, and also your message of challenge for us as individuals and as a community together. We lift up these prayers in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we will have our first centering song. Feel free to just listen and take in the words, uh, or feel free to sing along.
of our scripture reading today. So we're continuing on in our, um, in our exploration of the book of Exodus. And um, today's text comes from Exodus chapter 16 verses, um, chapter 16 verses 2 through 15. I'm going to put it in the chat box here in case you want to look it up. You can look it up online in whatever Bible version uh, you'd like. Okay. The whole Israelite community complained against Moses and Aaron in the desert. The Israelites said to them, Oh, how we wish that the Lord had just put us to death while we were still in the land of Egypt. There we could sit by the pots cooking meat and eat our fill of bread. Instead, you've brought us out into this desert to starve this whole assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to make bread rain down from the sky for you. The people will go out each day and gather just enough for that day. In this way, I'll test them to see whether or not they follow my instruction. On the sixth day, when they measure out what they have collected, it will be twice as much as they collected on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to the Israelites, This evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the Lord's glorious presence, because your complaints against the Lord have been heard. Who are we? Why blame us? Moses continued, The Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord heard the complaints you made against him. Who are we? Your complaints aren't against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole Israelite community, come near to the Lord because he's heard your complaints. As Aaron spoke to the whole Israelite community, they turned to look toward the desert. And just then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses, I've heard the complaints of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you will eat meat and in the morning you will have your fill of bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God. In the evening, a flock of quail flew down and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew all around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the desert surface were thin flakes, as thin as frost on the ground. When the, Israelite, when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? They didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Okay. So for our scripture reading today, um, I hope that we can just share our reflections on this text. For some of you, it's a familiar text, right? Uh, some of you know this story about manna raining down from heaven, coming down from heaven. And um, this is when we start hearing about the Israelite people and um, hearing them as complainers, labeling them as people who complain. And so, um, yeah, while you all kind of sit with your reflections a little bit, I'm just going to share some things that stood out for me. Um, so usually how I see this text interpreted is that the Israelite people are complaining, right? And that they're complaining is evidence of their doubt or their lack of faith. And it also makes me wonder how many Christians out there in the world now, um, some subconsciously, maybe not even subconsciously, say the same thing about protesters and activists and others who criti criticize the way things currently are, right? Um, are there nuances to complaining? Is when is complaining a hindrance? And when is complaining, quote unquote, complaining, uh, when does it help movement occur? So I had that question. Um, I also feel like they have the right to complain because there is literally no food for them uh, to the point that God has to drop some from the sky. Uh, so I found that to be to be interesting as well. Um, and I've seen some scholars write about this text about, um, you know, God is constantly giving instructions. And throughout the story of Exodus, we see God instructing the people and that um, some scholars say that God is trying to figure out how to be in relationship with the people. And so is trying to establish some rules um, to make their relationship better or easier to navigate. 
but we see that that's not the reality. Moses says, who are we, twice. And uh, the repetition in the story points to the oral tradition and the storytelling style of this story. And there's lots of communication happening here. Um, let me just say the communication. So the Israelites said to Moses and Aaron, right? Then we have the Lord said to Moses. Then we have Moses said to Aaron. Wait, Moses and Aaron said to the Israelites. And then we have Moses said to Aaron. And then we have the Lord spoke to Moses. And then we have the Israelites speaking to each other. And then Moses said to the Israelites. So what's missing here, I see, is that there's not so much communication between God and the Israelites themselves or vice versa. So that was an interesting point that I saw in this reading. All right, so I'm going to open it up for any reflections, questions, reactions that folks have to this text uh, this afternoon. Do you know why the Israelites spent 40 years in the desert wandering? So that all these complainers could die off. And all the young progressive people would be admitted to the land of milk and honey. That's my theory. I see. Is it is it uh, based in anything that you've seen? <laughs> no, it makes sense to me. Do you know also they couldn't gather enough manna to save over for the next day? Because if they kept more than they needed, it brought it automatically. Pretty neat. <laughs> what do you think that was about art? Well, that, you know, that, that was like putting the, our garbage in our green bag and putting it out, out the curb. No, no garbage left. I don't know, that's over my head. <laughs> Thanks for sharing art. <laughs> I, I, I said that to my Old Testament history class in high school, and the guy shut me up. <laughs> Any other thoughts on this text? Does it speak to doubt? Does it speak to faithfulness? If I were wandering around the desert for 40 years, I'd be pretty mad too. <laughs> I would be complaining. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. I hear you on that. Um, can you hear me? This yes, Michi. Michi. Yeah. I was just wondering with this scripture, is it a time of testing and, and just looking to see um, how we are as, a, as individuals in a situation where you're coming from something that's very difficult, difficult to another situation where you're kind of free to have, you know, step into a new type of life. And uh, it just seems like a period of reflection and thinking, just to see who you are or what you'll become. And then uh, and you have the complainers who will always be complaining, different types of personalities that you have. Um, it just seems like it's that period of time where we're tested, where God could see, you know, Actually, I guess we see ourselves. We know God doesn't change, but we do with different situations. I guess it's called complaining and whining <laughs> of you know people <laughs> of different personalities. 
I don't know, it just feels like a, a testing period of some time for God to see, for, for God to see us as well as for us to see ourselves. Thank you. Thanks, Michi. It sounds, it sounds a lot like our current times, right? Some folks are really utilizing this time to look in, to take stock, to look inward, take stock of their lives, and also to really see, um, you know, how, who, who we are in the world, right? Given all the things that are happening right now. Yeah. Any other thoughts? I see in the chat box, there's a question here. Is there a lack of spiritual food in this material society? All right. Well, Michi is also on point in regards to uh, the wilderness, right? The wilderness has been a symbol for um, Christians as, as being a, a, a time of uh, readiness, right? A time where we are preparing ourselves for the next step. That's what Jesus, during his time, in the wilderness from baptism to the wilderness time, you know, it was a preparation time before he went into ministry out in the rest of the community, you know. Um, there may be parallels here with that as well. This kind of seems like a time in the wilderness too. It's a time that we don't know how long we're going to be in, how long it's going to last, uh, how long we're going to have to wear a mask, uh, how long that we're isolated from general society, um, a time of reflection. For some of us, a time of change for other people, just burrowing, burrowing into their old thoughts. Um, I hope that we're being prepared for something better. Thanks, Anita. All right, any last thoughts before it'll we... be better it'll be better in November, Anita. <laughs> Much better. We all hope and pray that it will be. Yeah, that's the hope. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a great point. I like that, Anita. We're still wandering in the darkness here. We just have to hang together. It's nice to have this time of community so we can um, explore our thoughts about the Bible and it does open up to other ways of looking at things. Also, in our society now, people are going to have, are having to face whether they are racist or whether they have uh, set ways of thinking that um, maybe are not the kindest ways. Any more last thoughts? All right. Well, um, this idea of the wilderness time being a time of preparation, being a time of um, getting back and, and shedding old ways and coming into a new way of being, right? Uh, tied to our theme, it's not an easy, and I think we're all experiencing it, it's not an easy journey. It's not an easy thing to do. And we're forced to confront very hard things. Um, and the thing is that the Israelite people, they at least had each other. They could still share meals together if they had food. <laughs> they could still be in the company of one another, right? In our times, it's very different in the sense that, yeah, we're not even allowed to be in the same space without masks on and without that that distance there and yet we're still trying to find ways to be in community with one another so i'm wondering if you know even in the midst of this wilderness with the israelite people maybe there is doubt and lack of faith you know maybe there is that that plays out here um but i wonder if it plays out in regards to them forgetting that they are together in this and that they can create a new way for themselves. Uh, they were enslaved people, you know, and we remember that they were ensla enslaved people running away, leaving the Egyptian empire. But that also means that Egypt needed them to survive. It wasn't the other way around, you know, and I think that the Israelites forget that in this moment, that they're actually the ones that kept Egypt going. It wasn't the Egyptian empire. So maybe they underestimate, maybe they underestimate not just God, but 
their leaders, but maybe they're also underestimating themselves as a community. They forget who they are. And when this happens, maybe something bigger than ourselves has to step in. Something bigger than military might, not military might, something even bigger than that and something that unites us. So I know that y'all have most likely heard about the passing of um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, recently. And, you know, people, people have talked about that, are grieving that in different ways, right? Because she wasn't perfect. There are some communities that uplift her for the good things that she has done. And there are some communities that have critiques about um, her, um, her relationship with indigenous people or, um, you know, other, other communities of color and that it wasn't always perfect. She did move a few things, right? And, um, but those things that she moved was because of the work of people on the ground, right? because these are things that the community fight for. It's not necessarily leaders that initiate these, these things, these pushes for justice. It's really people on the ground who are complaining about injustice that pushes leaders to actually make the decisions needed that they can be put and implemented into law. I wonder sometimes how long Moses, um, how long Moses would have taken, right, to appeal to God for food if the Israelite people hadn't spoken up. I don't think we give enough credit to the Israelite people sometimes. I think sometimes we elevate individuals and we inadvertently uh, downplay the role of community and ourselves as individuals in that community. You know, individuals who we don't put up onto pedestals or anything like that. I think we feed the underestimation of ourselves and we underestimate the power of when we come together, the synergy of God when people come together and gather. One of these things, one of the things that makes this story messy is this dynamic um, upswing and downswing of change, even just within one community, right? And their one struggle, their struggle to just survive and be their own people. There are so many ups and downs. There's so much dynamics that are happening. And in these uncertain times, I pray that we continue to have the patience and the perspectives and the openness that will help make us the, that will help us make the most of upswings and to do our best not to lose our grips, you know, our grips of community, our grips of faith, our grips of ourselves, um, who are God's beloveds when the downswings come. I hope that we make the most out of this wilderness time, wherever it brings us on the other side of that. And it's up to us, as we all know, to create with God what that new reality will be, what that land of milk and honey will look like for us. And so um, we will actually continue talking about a story like this next Sunday when we gather together. And um, I, f I, I invite you to continue reflecting on this particular text because a lot of the similar stuff will come up there as well. And um, we'll, we'll share them together when we're in a, in a bigger group today. I mean, that Sunday. So I invite you all to take our reflections from this time all of the things that we're continuing to process, all the things that we have heard. And we will open up with our song of prayer, Spirit of Gentleness.
All right, we now take this time during our worship service to uh, intentionally connect with God through silent prayer, through silent meditation. Stepping out of our time of silence, we now open up this space for prayers to be shared aloud before the rest of the community. All right, if there are no more prayers to be lifted aloud at this time, um, we will close with this prayer. Uh, gracious and loving God, we lift up our prayers to you. The prayers of the various things that are happening in our times and in our lives, the various things that are happening in our minds, our spirits, and our hearts, God. We know that you have the capacity to hold all of these things. And so we give our prayers to you. We lift them up to you, knowing that when we do, you help us to create space so that we may put feet to these prayers, that we may act to these prayers. Help us, God, to remain faithful even in these times in one another, just as you continue to be faithful to us. Help us to look to you when we feel lost. Help us look to you when we feel hungry. Help us look to you when we feel that there is lack in the world. And help us to look amongst those around us of the abundance of love, of the abundance of graciousness that does exist here. God, we lift up prayers <clears throat> that you continue to accompany us, that you continue to accompany those who have gone on before us as well. And as we come together in this large community, help us to keep moving forward, even in the middle of wilderness. And God, we lift up this prayer to you this prayer that we learned from the one who journeyed through wilderness as well in preparation for something new and for something great when he said, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, so we have a song to close our time together, and then a prayer after that.
so for our closing prayer, there's a prayer from Howard Thurman that I will read for us. Um, so I invite you in these times to put a hand over your heart, put a hand on your belly, and uh, kind of pray for the embodiment of this prayer today. So again, Howard Thurman. Oh, holy God, open unto me light for my darkness, courage for my fear, hope for my despair. Oh, loving God, open unto me wisdom for my confusion, forgiveness for my sins, love for my hate. O oh God of peace, open unto me, peace for my turmoil, joy for my sorrow, strength for my weakness. O oh generous God, open my heart to receive all of your gifts. Amen. All right, so peace be with you, and I'll be here for um, 30 more minutes if folks want to fellowship with one another and get updates from one another. And, uh, and peace be with you. And also with you. <laughs>